Okay, hello. Um, this lesson today is going to be moving on now from focusing on the USA um, and having a look at Ronald Reagan. Although that's still going to be quite important, we're now going to be focusing on uh, this man here called Mikhail Gorbachev. And we're going to have a look at why his uh, leadership was really significant for the Cold War. So in the last lesson, we had a look at why Ronald Reagan's uh, leadership was significant in terms that he had probably contributed quite heavily to the Second Cold War from um, 1980 to 1985. We now have this man, Mikhail Gorbachev, who starts to lead the Soviet Union from 1985 onwards. And we want to really have a look at why he was significant today. The very first thing I want you to do is I've put a video uh, on the web page there and it's just Ronald Reagan in his first uh, term as president, so uh, from 1980 onwards, um, and he's making a few jokes about the Soviet Union. So I just want you to watch the video and watch the what he's saying, um, and obviously they're jokes, they're, they're a bit of an exaggeration, but what does he... Uh, reveal about what life was like in the Soviet Union uh, just from making these jokes. So as you're watching it, you should really be thinking about what kind of problems did the Soviet Union have between 1980 to 1985. So uh, if you just pause this video for um, however long it takes you just to watch that video and get your notes down for your starter, that'd be brilliant. So I'll give you time to pause the video now. Okay, and we'll move on from that now. So you should have seen in that video there um, that Ronald Reagan has made a few points about uh, living standards and the way um, that some of the rights that the people had in the Soviet Union and just the way in general the Soviet Union had um, uh, was leading itself and, and leading its people. So you should have picked up on a couple of those points there. So we've got a couple of key words today and these are all very relevant when we're talking about um, when we're talking about this part today. So we've got perestroika, which is uh, this policy that Gorbachev had. Uh, it was a policy of reconstructing the Soviet state and economy so that it included some capitalist elements. This is really significant because we haven't seen this happen in Soviet communism before. This is a completely new idea that was brought to the Soviet Union. So that's a very um, significant thing there. We then have this idea of glasnost, which is the policy of openness within government. Again, this is extremely significant because it, this is also something we haven't seen before. And it, essentially, if you have um, a more of an open government and uh, more rights in terms of freedom of speech, then that is going to naturally lead to allowing formal opposition. So you're going to have, for instance, political parties that are going to be able to be set up. They're going to be able to speak out against the government and therefore that could also lead to things like free elections happening and democracy starting to creep in to the Soviet Union. So again, a very significant policy here that is linked to um, Gorbachev. And finally, just the word unsustainable, which you probably already know, but uh, that just is something that is unable to continue for much longer, um, probably or usually because it costs too much money. So you can probably link that to some of the learning you did in the last lesson, um, particularly about Ronald Reagan and uh, some of the... Um, some of the weaponry that he had started to develop, which put a lot of pressure on the Soviet Union. So we'll move on from that. Just, we know that we're looking at Gorbachev today, so we understand that Brezhnev isn't in charge anymore. So what had ha actually happened? What, had, what happened to the leadership? Well, Brezhnev had actually died in 1982. So they needed to find a new leader. So they put this man in charge, Andropov. Everything's good. But then he actually dies in 1984. So they have to find someone else. And then they decide to put in this man here, uh, Chernenko. So everything's good there. But then he actually dies one year later. So the Soviet Union have had three leaders in the space of three years because they keep dying. So it doesn't look very good for them. Finally, they um, put Gorbachev in charge and he leads from 1985 onwards. So just important to note there who's in charge at this period. And you don't have to worry about the two men who are in the middle there because they weren't really significant in our topic. So, why did Gorbachev have this new thinking and some of these new ideas? Well, 
You probably remember a little bit about in the 1970s about what Brezhnev was under pressure to do. Remember that the economy wasn't really progressing very well and um, people were becoming quite dissatisfied with life in communism and that is why he had moved towards that idea of détente with uh, Richard Nixon. So those things hadn't really changed. So that's an important thing to note, first of all. Um, and essentially, Gorbachev had to go one step further. Let's have a look at some of the other reasons as well. Well, there was definitely poor leadership across the Soviet Union. The fact that they had three leaders who died within three years definitely didn't help the situation. Um, the fact that there were so many leaders over so many or over so many little years, and no effective change was really being made in the Soviet Union. There wasn't really anyone there um, to deal with the problems and the crises that had occurred. So Gorbachev had reflected on this when he came to power and he thought that some change needed to happen to the government. So that's one crucial part there. We know the, that the arms race was unsustainable as well. So after Ronald Reagan had introduced um, this strategic defence initiative, that had put a lot of pressure on the Soviet um, government and the Soviet economy to try to catch up with something similar themselves. And Gorbachev realised that this was just going to be unachievable. The economy was not as strong as the USA. So he needed to think of a way in which he could... Um, deal with this situation and he really needs to consider um, what he could do about that. There's another two points and we're going to look at them in just a little bit more in depth in this video. The first one is that there continued to be tensions and unrest in the satellite states. So although there was a lot of heavy handedness in the satellite states that we'd already seen in Hungary and Czechoslovakia, um, some more unrest was starting to unravel around this time because communism wasn't working. Um, and so Gorbachev was very much under pressure to deal with that. And finally, uh, the Chernobyl disaster, which we'll just have a look at in just a bit, that occurred in eight, uh, 1986 and again put a lot of pressure on Gorbachev um, in order to start really changing things and ensuring the safety in his country. So let's just have a look at those two last points there, point four and five. So the first one, tensions and unrest in the satellite states. The crucial one that had happened here was in Poland. So we have this party, or not a party, so they're actually a trade union, they're called Solidarity. Now a trade union is a group of workers um, who have joined together to try to put pressure on the government and their employers to give them better wages. And this became a really, really powerful trade union at the time that was causing a lot of unrest in Poland. It became so dangerous for the Soviet Union and for Poland itself um, that it was actually banned by the Soviet Union and uh, martial law was imposed in Poland. So martial law is where the police actually run the country. So no longer are the um, government there really in charge, it's the police there and they're having these sort of brutal crackdowns on people that um, are trying to really question the way they're being led. So again, we see this sort of similar situation that we'd seen in Hungary. Um, maybe, you know, you can draw some parallels to Czechoslovakia as well. And um, we can see that now we've had uh, Khrushchev and Brezhnev have both dealt with one of these. So what is uh, Gorbachev going to do about this situation here? It's something he has to figure out and he needs to figure it out fast. And the next one, as we'd already said, was the Chernobyl disaster in 1986. Now, uh, Chernobyl is based in Ukraine. It's sort of near the border between uh, Belarus and Ukraine. And at this time, both those states were actually part of the Soviet Union. So this was a, a catastrophic um, incident that actually happened within the Soviet Union. Um, you might already know this was a massive explosion at a nuclear power plant in Chernobyl. It's really devastating. It was actually 100 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. Surprisingly, it didn't actually kill that many people. It only killed 35 people, but 350,000 people had to be evacuated because of the nuclear fallout. And really interestingly as well, one-fifth of Belarus's farmland actually became useless after this. So suddenly, um, we, we can really, well, we can see that a maybe the infrastructure of um, the Soviet Union wasn't great. But also what this had really done was it had shown Gorbachev that um, nuclear um, power was actually very dangerous and it actually led him to reflect on um, nuclear war and nuclear warheads. So this was quite a crucial event that really impacted Gorbachev's thinking as well. 
So now I've just explained some of the reasons that um, led Gorbachev to really um, start thinking about um, his ideas and to develop this new thinking, it's time just for you to move on to the main tasks. So the first one is just for you to have a look into exactly what Gorbachev's new thinking was. It's not a very long task. I just want you to read the information on this on the web page. Just for each one, um, please just explain what they were and what co caused Gorbachev to make this decision. So just think about what I've already spoken to you about just there and think about the lesson that you'd learned before about on Ronald Reagan. Um, what were the key things that really led him to make those decisions. So I've given you a table in your um, worksheet today. So if you could complete that table, that'd be great. If you don't have the worksheet, just complete it on a piece of paper, please. Um, there's also some challenge questions here that you might want to think about. If you can, that'd be fantastic because these are quite important too. So the first bit is uh, what consequences do you think Gorbachev's new thinking might have had on the following? So think about what might the consequences have been on the Soviet Union, on the Eastern Bloc, on superpower relations, and finally, what might the consequence be on the Cold War as a whole? And there's just a second part to that challenge question as well. Would everyone have been happy with Gorbachev's new thinking? Can you think of any groups that would have been against this, perhaps? So I'll give you time to pause the video now. It should probably take you maybe about 10 to 15 minutes to complete this, and you can come back to the video once you are done. Okay, so I believe you would have done task one now, so that's absolutely fantastic if you have. Um, you should really have reflected there on why Gorbachev had actually developed this new thinking and why he had done that. So we'll move on next to task two. And this is the final task of the day. There's no writing task at the end here. Um, so I just want you to think about how this new thinking would have affected superpower relations. So read the information towards the bottom of the web page, please. So about how it was received in the West. And just take notes, please, um, that the work about the work that the Soviet Union and the USA had put in to limit tensions. Um, so you see lots of different summits that were attended by both uh, Gorbachev and Reagan. So what we see really is this kind of parallel between um, the detente period and this period of Gorbachev. So I want you to think, when you've read all of those, what summit do you believe that was the most significant in um, easing superpower tensions and why? And finally, the final question for the day, can you think of a time from 1945 to 1990 where relations were at their best point? Why have you chosen this time? So that is the end of the video. Um, so please complete task two. If you can upload the worksheet to show my homework, that's fantastic. Please get back to me on show my homework if there are any questions you have. And I will see you soon.